The stone gargoyle trains glistening agate eyes upon you. Its jaws creak open, raining dust as it begins to speak. You are not Bracchus Rex. No. Bracchus is the one with the ring. You may enter any way. You may stay forever. Each lock opens only with a soul. And how many of those does one mortal have? Maybe you'll find some in the garden. Or maybe your soul will help the next adventurer through. They always do. Careful now. That's a trap. These skulls crumble to dust after one use. Well, that doesn't look ominous at all. Why do I get the feeling we'll be on the other side of it in a moment? This gargoyle flares its lichenous nostrils as you draw near. Master would be impressed. Another skull crumbled to bits. The gargoyle taps one stony claw upon its plinth as it rasps a message to you. Riddle me this, wanderer. How would mighty Bracchus douse a man on fire? <laughs> Please, help! The flames will burn me forever! 
You released me, Elf. Long have I waited for this moment. You're in the wrong place, then, I fear. This island's a cauldron of suffering, right through to the roots in the ground. You know of Bracchus Rex, I assume? The figure nods grimly. Mm, he did terrible things while trying to master Source, bend it to his will. I had a part in this, I must admit. Perhaps I deserve the flames. No, no, I was a scholar, a librarian. Brecker sought the secrets of Source, but he had no patience for sifting through ancient scrolls and tablets. I unearthed knowledge of a great power within those texts, a great and terrible power, one that Brachus coveted above all. The figure's ruined flesh curls into a scowl. Long destroyed, surely. Brachus wanted no one to have that knowledge. He fed me to the flames so I'd keep my secret. He'd have no qualms about burning a few scrolls. The figure slowly shakes his head. I will not say. I spoke of it once and was damned to eternal hellfire for it. Were I to speak of it again, I could damn the whole world. Bracchus must have failed. Had he not, the world as you know it would be gone. What I learned of could still be out there. I will not speak of it. I won't risk having another Brachus discovering it. Good! Were I to say any more, I'd only put you in danger. Leave this awful place. Go live your life. Forget about all this. It is best left buried. And stranger, thank you for freeing me. I had doubted this moment would ever come. Another skull crumbled to bits. Another skull crumbled to bits.
The stony gaze of the gargoyle pins you to the spot as it spreads its wings before you. You... You have earned your reward. As you enter the room, you see three skeletons sitting around a table, cards in hand. They creak and turn to stare at you. A beating heart. Does Bracchus need us once more, Jailer? Are we finally to be freed? You're not one of Bracchus's brood. You're not Gratiana's pet. Then why do you disturb us? The flesh yearns for our secrets. Did I not say that word would spread by genius? Even after the maggots took your tongue, you still talk too much. Silence your jaw. That wench, a priestess, is no more godly than the mites in my skull. I've never seen a more treacherous smile than on her full, voluptuous lips. Canst thou think of nothing else? How many centuries have I endured hearing you remember your conquests? Hey, at least I didn't have to raise mine. That was not but a whisper on the wind. A vile rumor. Oh, it coughs. I will not sit by as it breathes thus. It mocks us with the very air passing twixt its lips. The shambling creatures lay down their cards and push back their chairs. Indeed, but we'll soon put an end to that. And then... Freedom. There's no curse in this world that I fear more than this, and no foe that I fear less than death.
You approach the still body and see its nostrils flaring. Long dead eyes rise to meet yours. As you lean in close, it lurches forward. Its arms thrash against the cage bars as it tries to reach you. Looks like it hasn't been fed in a very long time. Among the long crumbled remains of the temple that must have once sheltered his shrine, the stone effigy of a god seems to invite you to put your hands in his. heard something. Something seemed to move into place. Careful now, that's a trap. Not at all. Sarcastic me, not at all. I'd never be sarcastic me. Oh no, not in the least. I do not. I sound perfectly normal. Obviously. The rat gives you a desperate look. Help me. The rat opens its mouth to speak. 
can't say anything. So it nods its head, then shakes its head, then nods it again. The rat tries to nod its head and fails. It tries to shake its head and fails. Its head ends up doing a strange, jerking diagonal movement that could mean anything. This is... this is... this is not frustrating. And you are not a clever creature, not having rumbled my quandary. Get me? Physical. It makes a face that says, understand. The rat gives you a grave and meaningful look, inviting you to listen carefully. I don't think the problem is in my head, and further to that, I don't think the problem could be unscrambled by the use of sauce. I can categorically state that a short, sharp shot with something of a magical persuasion would absolutely not solve my problem immediately. And I do not invite you to look at the subtext in what I just said. The rat gives you a long stare that tries and fails to say, of course not. The rat breathes a long sigh of relief, closes its eyes, and steals itself for what's coming. You approach a decrepit well and stare down into its toothless black mouth. No sooner has your head crossed the rim than weak voices begin to echo from the depths. Thirst. Dry throats. Drink. Water. Water. The well is now filled to the brim with fresh, cool water, but what it has brought to the surface quickly evaporates any wish you may have had to quench your own thirst. You see the tangled remains of three corpses, a mixed mass of bones and skin from which three skulls protrude. They address you in unison, their voices a drone-like blend. We thank you for the water. We bless you for the water. We thank you for the end of torment. A horror, yes. To die of thirst, forever. To find hell at the bottom of a well. We are the brothers of Baladur. Truth speakers, wish granters, dream readers. Three brothers, three sages, thrice cursed never more never more not since we displeased mad bracchus rex the truth we spoke his fortune told no divinity would he be and so he entangled our bodies and cursed our throats smote the truth speaking three we thank you for the water we bless you for the water we ask you for the fair, the fair, the toll, the levy. The people of Baladur must be buried with coin. Coin for the pathkeeper that leads the dead to the kingdom beyond. Spare us coin. Grant us coin. The more you pay, the further the pathkeeper takes us. Ancient things cling to our bones like earth to roots. They will be yours. For coin. For coin. Sweet saviour. Friend of death and fiend of life. How much will you give? We thank you again. We bless you again. 
the wealth of the depths is yours. Pass keeper, keep us. Pass keeper, guide us. To the long awaited kingdom we will go. Laden with a burden of the coin you gave them, the brothers of Balador sink back to the bottom of the well. Whether they will find their kingdom or languish in the dark, wet depths forever, you cannot foretell. done me a great service. Now, allow me to help you. The source barrier that blocks your way. I still have enough power to allow you entry. It shall be done then. Too heavy. to speak only truth and he admitted pleasing Bacchus's mistress. Yes, you did. Ah. The jar stands before you, cold and still. As you remove the lid, a fresh wind fills the room. For a moment, you think you smell pine, and then power rushes inside you. You can feel sauce coursing through your veins. For a moment, you're seeing through someone else's eyes. You behold a dungeon, a deck of cards in your hand, and a pair of skeletons before the vision passes. The jar seems quieter now. It sits still. Something inside you strains. You are replete. You cannot absorb more source. The jar seems quieter for just a moment. Source swirls around you, and then, with a whisper, it cascades into your body. You feel light as the power of the universe fills your being. You feel your spirit jolt, and for a heartbeat, you're looking through other eyes. You see a dungeon and a table shared with two other skeletons before you collapse. When you open your eyes, you're back in your old body, senses buzzing with newly found source power. The pictograms on the jar, as you reach into the jar, the source flows into your body. You feel warm, lightheaded, and you pulse with power. You blink, and for a split second, you're looking through the soul's eyes. You see a locked dungeon, cards scattered on a table, and a pair of skeletons. The image only lasts a moment, and then you're back, the empty soul jar in your hand, while its power pounds through your body. <laughs> 